Good morning. The last couple days I've been working on some fiberglass to fill the holes. This, I have no idea what that hole was, but it was already broken. This had microphone and data lines, all the connectors for that to run everything inside. And this was like shore power and 110 and all that good stuff. So I started working on this yesterday and holy moly, did I make a mess. Then on the other side of the van, we had the vent for the air conditioner. So that's what that is. So I'm gonna try to finish filling that out so I can sand it. I have to sand off a little bit of that stuff right now. See how that goes. And then on the inside, I also fiberglass that. Okay. So there and there, so that's all waterproof. I have to trim up a piece on my sub floor. This will be my braces to hold the insulation in. And it's really time to get cracking on it. I have been a big slacker. So the reason you wanna wear protection is fiberglass is really itchy. So I didn't wear protection yesterday or the first day that I sanded this all down. And oh my gosh, oh the itchies. Oh, my legs, my arms. So today I have a long sleeve shirt on. I have some gloves and a mask. Getting cracking. Talk at you later. So I'm working on the van again. I am adding my Havelock in insulation to the walls. Okay, um, can you see that? Yay. And it's going really well. It's it's actually kind of fun. I have a lot of little creeks, like little crevices, and you get to shove it in there, and that's kind of neat. And I did use some spray insulation along the little. It was like a little gully in here. And so I did use some spray insulation in there. But if you notice what this is, this is a Japanese uh, handsaw. This has been invaluable. When I am cutting and cleaning it up, this makes it so easy. What makes a Japanese handsaw so cool is that it cuts on the pull, not the push. An American saw is cut on the push. It's also very flexible. I'll see if you can see that. So if I need to get it in somewhere, right, and I can cut this way and then cut this way and it makes it very easy to cut off. As far as the Havlick wool, I'm enjoying it. I like it. A couple of the issues with it, it is not consistent thickness all the way through. Um, parts a little thinner than others and a little frustration with that. I am attaching it at least two ways. I'm gonna come back in with staples. This is how they suggest and staple it here. My friend who does RV repair, says that every time he pulls a wall down and they have soft insulation, the insulation has fallen to the bottom and it's not insulated on the top. So I will staple it in several strategic points. I've also used spray foam, or not spray foam, I'm sorry, spray um, 3M90, a contact adhesive, high strength contact adhesive. Normally I use spray 77, but this is a little more ump to it. Then I might come back and do the string method. So the string method is, is that you make points and you pull the string back and forth and that's supposed to hold it up. My issue is, or my fear is, that when you're driving on bumpy roads that it will shimmy down. So I'm gonna hit this in as many ways to secure it as I can. Have lock wool for the win. See how easy that was. I'm also going to keep all these little pieces and I've been shoving them in to places that I think needs more insulation so I'm not actually wasting anything. And recycle. You make the trash, clean up the trash. So that was my theory on that. Okay. But I really love how easy that is to clean up. Okay. The other thing is, is I'm running my have like wool this way instead of this way. All this was already here. There's about a three quarters of an inch of polystyrene foam already in this um, from 18 years ago when they built this out. So I'm just putting my have that wool all the way to the edge. I'm also going to do a half inch of wool on top of this before I screw in, or before I screw in the walls. The reason I'm running my wool this way, again, my RV friend 
said that this stuff all shifts down, makes sense. You're on rough roads, basically little hurricanes or um, little uh, earthquakes, and it will shimmy down. So I'm running it this way so all the weight isn't pulling down. That was my theory anyway. So I've got that pretty much cleaned up. Shoved all these little pieces in, these little holes and gaps that was created when I shot my foam in there. Come back in this edge first. And then pull it through. fluffier side and kind of a um I don't know not quite as fluffy I guess this is where the pins go so it felts it if you've ever felted you stub it with pins and it becomes more solid so I want that one on the outside I'm gonna pull up that about half inch and I save all this because all this will be used and shoved into whatever little crevices it can be shoved in the um, I've got little gaps here that I'll fill in. One of the ways that I do that is with my scissors. I'm notorious for losing my tools. So my scissors come back in and I'm gonna fill that in as much as I can. And the more places I fill, the less, less likely to have drafts. For using spray foam, spray adhesive without a mask. Whatever you need to do. Hey, stay safe. And if you're ready to make a change, do it. You are worth it. Talk at you later. Bye-bye.